Gladstone on the central Queensland coast is an energy-hungry industrial hub where massive aluminium smelters burn huge volumes of coal-fired power. We've got a port that is one of the best ports in the world as far as I'm concerned, uh, a highly skilled workforce, a very sophisticated supply chain that can support these industries and a community that supports industrial development. For the past two years, it's been the testing ground for what's been billed as the nation's zero carbon energy future, powered by green hydrogen. It starts with electricity, which is usually solar or wind, and then it creates hydrogen from that, which ultimately can then be used as a fuel, um, which is completely green. Gladstone was earmarked by state and federal governments for billions in investment in the zero carbon green fuel. What sort of things are you chasing? What sort of parts are you looking for at the moment? Chris Skirman runs a local civil construction business and was enthusiastic about the talk of a hydrogen boom. Very, very big projects um, being discussed, um, you know, billions and billions of dollars worth of construction in the area, so pretty, it was pretty exciting. This is the industry town, so our economy sort of needs it. For half a decade, successive federal governments have been betting big on green hydrogen. We are investing a further $1.6 billion dollars to fund priority technologies including clean hydrogen and energy storage. We are investing two billion dollars in a new hydrogen Head Start program so Australia can be a world leader in producing and exporting hydrogen power. Green hydrogen has promised a lot. Its backers say it can develop new industries like green steel and green ammonia that Australia can sell to the world. It can decarbonise existing industries and help support the power grid. It's also promised a lot to communities like here in Gladstone, built around energy intensive heavy industry. Billions would be spent and new lasting jobs created. But those great expectations have so far left some greatly disappointed. Any new energy uh, will involve taking some risk on a number of different technologies. Some will pay off and some won't. In July, resource giant Fortescue announced it was dumping its green hydrogen plants in Gladstone and mothballing this near-new facility on the city's outskirts. The company hoped this plant would produce 8,000 tonnes of hydrogen a year. It now sits idle. Ultimately, what it comes down to is green hydrogen is very expensive to produce. Fortescue has said the cost of making green hydrogen hasn't fallen as far as they'd hoped, as quickly as they'd hoped. That makes any hydrogen produced more expensive and means there is very little demand. The cost of this fuel is, at the moment, 300 to 700 per cent higher than, for example, a similar competing source of energy, which is gas. Earlier this year, the Queensland government-owned Stanwell Corporation pulled its financial support for another massive hydrogen project in Gladstone, known as CQH2. Queensland Treasurer David Janetsky argued it would have required significantly more than $1 billion in state government funding. And his government is focused on our energy generators providing affordable, reliable and sustainable power for Queenslanders. A couple of years ago, a lot of the projects that were floating around were absolutely gigantic. You know, they, they, were, they would have required electricity infrastructure equivalent to the entire energy market that we have now. Like, you would have had to build a second energy market to support them. We're now in a phase where people are going, actually, let's just take the intermediate step. Fortescue is pushing ahead with plans to make green iron at one of its mines in the Pilbara, essentially producing iron using hydrogen rather than coal or gas. For certain uses of green hydrogen, that being in the, the creation of energy, the market hasn't developed as fast as we would have liked. But other forms of the use of green hydrogen, where we see it to be used in the manufacture of green iron, um, because of its chemical and reductant properties are uh, quite sound. Reports of the death of green hydrogen are, in my view, exaggerated. I don't discount the headwinds and the challenges, but nor do I discount the opportunities and the potential. The Albanese government has put billions on the table in subsidies for green hydrogen. Most, but not all, of that funding has been offered as tax credits, paid for every kilo of green hydrogen produced. So if the hydrogen is never made, the money won't be paid out. The government remains confident the landscape for green hydrogen will start to shift. With many things, they're very expensive to start with, but as the critical mass 
um, expands, as the market expands, as technology improves, as people invest and the cost curve comes down rapidly. What we're waiting to see is when will that happen for green hydrogen. In Gladstone, businesses are left waiting for a boom they don't know will come. It is a little disappointing. There's a lot of people, you know, building and preparing for those projects that um, that are, are now not sure what's, what the future is for them. Others wonder what the billions in taxpayer funds offered to green hydrogen might have bought elsewhere. It's the lost opportunity, it's the other areas of the energy transition, the other areas of our in, um, industrial policy where we've lost the opportunity to be doing great things on other fronts because so much focus has been on green hydrogen.